Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's Data Color webinar, Spider HD, the calibration seat for still and video color management. I'm Boris Bergman, and I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. First, allow me to give you a short overview about the next upcoming, let's say, 60 minutes. We will um, start in a few seconds with a presentation about the newest data color product, the Spider HD. The Spider HD is a bundle, and you will see um, what is in and how to use the Spider HD product. Um, at the end of this presentation, um, I will take you into chat where you have the possibility to enter all the questions you have. With the follow-up mail of this webinar, you will get uh, a discount code uh, on some attractive special discounts, and uh, you'll receive this uh, either tomorrow in the afternoon or maybe on Friday morning. Well, it's not 100% sure at the moment, but you will receive that information. Also, one of you uh, will win a um, Spider HD product. Uh, I will uh, tell you the name at the end of this webinar. So, let's start right away. So, I'm Boris Bergman, one of uh, two presenters uh, that will do this uh, webinar. Uh, tonight, it will be on my me on my own, so uh, you're warmly welcome for this webinar now. Okay, so Spire HD, the first overall color management solution. So that's on videography as well as on photography. So that means either your TV as well as your cameras. So for all of those who take photos or take videos or just um, do both, you say. Okay, so we have everything inside, and uh, the point or the, the aim is at the end to have color management, it has to be reproducible, and it has to create consistent colors. That's the main target and uh, the main amount of uh, color management. Okay, so let's have a closer look. And uh, what I will do tonight, I will uh, focus on those uh, uh, parts of the product which are related to what is not a standard calibration. That means what goes more into the video as well what goes more into some uh, more detailed camera calibration and uh, monitor calibration parts. Okay, let's start right away. Spider HD, the bundle, what's inside the box? And we have a Spider 4 Elite HD. That's the Spider 4 sensor. We have a Spider Web with the cradle and with some elastic cords to attach the Spider to a large TV set, a large monitor. Of course, you can do it in the normal way with the counter white, and you can adjust the counter white along the, the cable. Just pull gently. Okay, then we have a spider cube. Interesting, not only for photographers, also for videographer. And uh, we have the spider checker. And uh, what you can't see at the moment, uh, you can flip those cards, and uh, this will be interesting for all those who take videos. Okay, let's have a closer look. What is live without color management? A lot of people would say in the past, much easier, but uh, <clears throat> that's only half the truth, because life without color management, think about having not a calibrated monitor. And if you think about this, uh, let's have a, a little example here. What we do first, we take an image, and to make it easier to understand what I'm talking about, you see in the camera display, you see it's black and white. It's just for this sample here. So what we do, we take the image, everything's okay, and we save it onto the hard disk of the computer. Okay, if you compare the image on the hard disk, and you can see the little uh, image there, if you compare this to the um, screen of the camera, you will see both are black and white, but not identical, because on most cameras you can't calibrate 
the display on the camera. For those who are working on videography, um, if you have a field monitor, a few of these monitors can be calibrated, and this can be very helpful. Okay, so we have now the image on the hard disk, and what we will do next, we will open this image, let's say in Photoshop. But by accident, I had to replace my monitor yesterday, and I haven't got the time to calibrate, so it's not calibrated, it's just out of the box. And let's imagine it is um, showing a green tint, as you can see here. So my first view to my image is on the monitor, so I will judge my image after the monitor. And when I see this green tint, I would say, okay, maybe I've done something wrong with the shooting. Okay, let's correct this. And if you remember the circle of colors, the green, uh, if you go to the uh, colors which are opposite in the circle of colors, that would be magenta. Okay, we are in RGB, so just add some blue and red. So that's magenta in the end. Okay, if we do this correction, we will have, again, a black and white image. Okay, we have done this, and um, now it looks good on my monitor. And now what I'll do, I will save this image. And what I have added, I have added red and blue. So I will save this image, add it with now some red and blue, and that's the result. Because before the image was neutral, now red and blue, that means a little bit of magenta. So we have a magenta tint now. Okay, let's go for the next step, which will be the printing process. And in, let's imagine the printing process is perfect, and but due to the reason we print a magenta image, if it is perfectly printed, it will be magenta in the output, of course. So the problem is, that you need to have all components to be calibrated. The printing process, the output process has to be okay. If the output is video, of course the video monitor has to be calibrated. And the monitor where you added your images has to be calibrated. The camera, the shots uh, you are going to take should be something to be able to be calibrated or to be able to do color management. And uh, when you do video editing, it's even more complex. The reason behind, I will explain you in a few seconds. So let's start right away. Let's start with the Spider HD package. And that means we will start at the beginning. Let's start with Spider Cube. And as I mentioned, I will focus on the um, uh, on the monitor and uh, TV calibration. We will do the, the Spider Cube very shortly here. So let's start with the Spider Cube. We have the Spider Cube, and that means we shoot in RAW. That's what you're doing. But um, the advantage of shooting in RAW is also the disadvantage. The advantage is that you have the possibility to have a full flexibility on exposure, color temperature, blacks, highlights. You can adjust, you have about approximately two stops in reserve. But on the other hand, we don't have a reference on the conversion from the RAW to a TIFF file, a JPEG. That's the disadvantage, you see. The flexibility has also its negative aspects. So we need a reference, because otherwise the question is, what's it? Is it more a uh, little bit dark, or is it more cold, more warm? And if you have a closer look at this image, what you can see here on the left, that was our former office of data color. Um, on the left, we had a large uh, window. But on the right, as you can see up here on the leaves, you can see there was some uh, artificial light. It was a bulb light over there. But the major aspect, the major light comes from the window, so we have a mixed light situation. That's what happened very often. And therefore, we used the spider cube. 
the spider cube gives us the reference we need. As it is a cube, um, of course, one side, here it's the left one, will be brighter compared to the right one here. Because we have a mixed light situation and if one is the dominant light, it will be those one which is the brighter side of the cube. And that's what we will use for setting up the white balance. Okay, that's good to know. What else do we have? We have a white area, we have a black area, we have a black trap, and we have a chrome ball on top. And so we can use, not only for the white balance, which would be here, that would be the 18% neutral gray, we have also the possibility to uh, adjust the contrast as we have the white, the black, black trap, and the highlights. So by this, make sure this is clipped, and over here it's clipped also, and you have no or almost no clipping up here in the white. So that's the very easy way to do this. And you can do this also with the uh, built-in camera white balance, because sometimes this can be an advantage even in shooting in a studio. Okay. So that's the way how we can do photos. But now it comes to the camera when you do video. When you do video, you need the white balance. The reason is we have, when we shoot in RAW with the still, we have the reserve of two stops. If we do video, we shoot the video in a compressed mode. You have a codec. It's, you can compare this if you're on still, like shooting in JPEG, you see. There is no reserve. And that's the reason why you need, when you take JPEG, when you take uh, films, you need the white balance. Of course you can use the white balance from the spider cube. Alternatively, we can use the spider checker because the spider checker for still it is to adjust the colors and to adjust the colors if you have a closer look here uh, it's not adjusting the colors for the professionals who work for um, companies who do um, product shots, uh, box shots, beauty shots or whatever. It's for everybody. Think about a situation where you're outside in the field or you're, just imagine, you're a, a hobbyist and you're outside in the field and uh, on holiday and you have your large SLR camera with some extra lenses with you. But on the other hand, if you go out in the night, you don't carry around this stuff. You will have the little um, small uh, camera which also supports RAW for example, the system camera. Okay, so the disadvantage is each camera has, it's like in the films, the analog film in the good old time, each film had his own characteristics and that's the same as the camera. And to uh, tell you this little story here, that's from one of my colleagues, uh, he also uh, he used to be a photographer and um, outside in the field when he was doing some photography, he, he met a girl, she also uh, is a hobbyist photo photographer, she, and she's quite good, but he uses an icon, she uses a Canon. Um, believe it or not, uh, they are still happy. <laughs> okay, so, and if they, they, for example, a few times a year, they, they shoot a, a wedding, and um, to, to make you understand, uh, we have increased the saturation a little bit that, so that you can see in the webinar um, with all the disadvantages of uh, the webinar technique um, that you can still see the difference. So you can see the NAF files which are a little bit warmer compared to the CR2s which are a little bit colder from the Canon. And this is what you can do, but um, think about your own cameras. and. If I will do, um, to adjust this, I just need 
a shot with the spider checker because then I have the reference. And as the spider checker works only on the HSL channels, um, we have a color correction which is just one click away. And now think about your GoPro, which doesn't do RAW. Think about the DSLR that does RAW. But think about, for example, a video camera, the C300, for example. You can adjust them, but for the GoPro, for all those who don't have RAW, you need the white balance. The color balance, you can do with the spider checker. The white balance also, I'll show you in a minute. So this is to, uh, to adjust the color balance very, very easy. And due to the reason that the spider checker works on the HSL, it's perfect harmonized to work together with the spider cube because the spider cube you can use and you have exposure, blacks, whites, and so on, no effect on the HSL. So that means you can combine them. Perfect. Okay. So the question is what to do with the spider checker? First, as I mentioned before, it works on HSL. That means you have to have an application that have enough HSL channels like Adobe Photoshop RAW, so Adobe Camera RAW, Lightroom and Focus from Hasselblad do. Unfortunately, other programs don't. On the video, it is the new DaVinci Resolve 11. Sorry, I know it's not um, out on as a final version in all languages. For example, in German, it's still a beta version. but. The Resolve 11 version from DaVinci, uh, it's from Blackmagic Design, that supports the spider checker. So what else uh, can you do? As I mentioned, there's much more. You will see down here a little red patch. And this red patch is the so-called fade checker because there's a second one. And as you can just open the covers here, there are magnetic locks here, you can take out the cards and you could replace them um, because let's say you have forgotten to to close the uh, spider checker and you left the spider checker laying in, in a window cell, which is uh, facing south and uh, you have laid it there for a couple of months it's laying in the sun of course it will fade but first it will fade here so by uh, controlling the inside with the outside red patch, you will see, okay, it's time to replace. But to be honest, we don't sell much replacement cards at the moment because uh, the people who purchased three, four years ago, they are still very happy because uh, there was no fading effect yet. So just close it and it will be okay and uh, we use it also for years, so that's no problem. That's the fade checker, so if necessary, it could be replaced. What else is possible? It's, as I mentioned, the fade checker, but next we have an extended area for the skin tones, which is this one over here. And this skin tones allow you, for example, to create a special setting. So there is a perceptual setting, a colorimetric setting, and a portrait setting. The portrait setting will reduce the saturation in the orange and red tones a little bit to make sure uh, the skin does not become reddish. So that's also helpful. So as I mentioned, it's durable, uh, ecological, but if you turn them around, as I do now, you have a great card. And from now you see, for all those who take their videos, and as I mentioned, we don't have the reserve of a raw file on a video. So if you do have the white balance with your video camera at the beginning of the recording, then you can use the spider checker afterwards to adjust. And the spider checker works with DaVinci Resolve, but also 
you can use the spider checker setting the user preset you generate in Lightroom also on video. It works. So that's also a possibility to adjust different videos to what's to be from the color point of view to be as one. So that's what you can do. Very easy. And how does it work? You will see you take a shot. Uh, you will crop this uh, into open with the raw converter. And uh, if you're, for example, in Lightroom, it's just a plug into Lightroom and you launch it from there and then it will be adjusted automatically. So that's beautiful and easy. And if you're in Lightroom, for example, you will see the adjustments and you can see this to the HSL. You can see that's um, on color saturation luminance for all sliders. All sliders have been affected. And then you have your user-defined presets and you will just uh, apply the presets. So that's the way how to apply this in Lightroom. You can do this as well as in the OB camera raw and you can um, use those presets inside the, the bridge from Adobe as well. But this works on still. Um, the advantage if you do it on Lightroom also, you if you open um, in the library of Lightroom a video, you can apply directly in the library of Lightroom um, also a preset, a user preset. Okay, so there it works for films as well. So that's the advantage for those who don't have DaVinci Resolve at the moment. Okay, good. Let's continue. And now we will step over to um, the monitor calibration and TV calibration. So Spider 4 Elite HD, the sensor. And uh, the question is, why should we calibrate? The problem is, for example, go to one of the uh, large Technic supermarkets, uh, you will have in, in each larger city and have a look around and you can see all these monitors, TV sets they have there. And if you're lucky, they have all the same image on, but you can see then very easy the differences between the, the, the screens. And one reason for the difference is the monitor technology, each, for example, the backlight technology. You remember in the past, we had CRTs, that was easy, okay. Then we have the LCDs, but in the beginning of the LCDs, it was CCFL, that's a neon tube in the frame. And nowadays we have different LED techniques. And if you go back in the real life and compare a normal, uh, a normal bulb light compared to an LED, to, compared to an energy saving light, you will see, oh, it looks different or go in, into a car, drive a car, first time with xenon headlights on, and you will see, oh, it looks different. It's the spectrum that's different. If you allow your eyes a few minutes to adjust, it get used to it, no problem. After a few minutes or after a few weeks driving a car with xenon lights, you would say, okay, it's okay now. If you go back to a car with a normal headlight, you would say, mm, what's this? It's a, a, a yellow candle in front? No, no, no. You just get used to it. That's no problem. But the problem is that humans can get used to only one light source at the time. So if you, if you have two monitors, for example, one is CCFL, and or you have three monitors, one is CCFL, one is the other ones are LED, and, and they use different LED techniques, you will have three calibrated monitors. If you only watch one at the time, it's okay. If you watch all three at the time, your eyes will be not able to adjust them simultaneously. It will be only one. So two of them will look with a color cast. The Spider 4 Elite and Spider 4 Elite HD software has a possibility here to adjust. This is one information. But we have also different monitors. We have different monitor types. You can also adjust. We have normal gamut, white gamut, OLED, tablets, no problem. They can be adjusted. That's the most important thing. 
Next, we have an aging process, you see. Over the years, even LED monitors will have an aging effect. That means the backlight will fade a little bit, the RGB filters, because the backlight is white. Uh, and there are filters in front of the LCD that are red, green, and blue, uh, so-called sub-pixels you might have read about. And these are filters, and they will fade. So as you can see, the aging process on these three monitors here on this slide. This has to be corrected. Okay, let's do it. So, the Spider 4 Elite HD software will cover this, and it will do the computer display calibration, as well as the TV and video reference display calibration, the field monitors. And um, so, let's have a look. Let's start with the laptop and desktop computer calibration. So you can see we have one slide where you, uh, one, when you launch the software you just have to decide okay is it a monitor or is it a TV I'm going to calibrate now. So let's start with the computer monitors and so when you launch the software you might have done this in the past with calibration software it's more or less uh, the same. You have to warm up, you check for the lightning conditions, uh, for the display controls, and, and so on. Okay, as I have promised you, I will have a closer look, especially to those settings uh, which are more to the video, because when you do the video editing and you have um, a calibrated monitor, it will help. Okay. Let's say we choose LCD here and say it's um, it only has a brightness because it's a Thunderbolt display. Okay, then it comes to the calibration setting. Maybe a few of you already know this. What I'll do now, it's a full calibration, I would say gamma 2.2. It's a, a white point of 6500K, brightness 200, 120 candela per square meter. And then I'll go on to the advanced settings because now the interesting part starts. And in the advanced settings, you can select different targets. Usually you say, okay, okay I'll just do a calibration. And the normal calibration you do is, as I mentioned before, gamma 2.2, 6500, 120. That's the LCD default. But if you're, for example, in the US and you want to do a video to editing for TV, it's NTSC, or if you're in Europe, it's PAL or SICAM. But much more interesting is, of course, the ITU REC BT 709. So it's very often just called REC 709. That's the standard you will use for HDTV and you will use for DVD and Blu-ray. On 4K technology, um, it looks like there will be a new standard, but it's not fixed at the moment. And at the moment, the problem is you can purchase 4K devices, but uh, there is no 4K data at the moment on TV so and also on recording. But this will come, as you can imagine. So that's the point where you can select. To be honest, the REC 709 is very close to sRGB from the color space. Um, from the gamma, it's not identical. From the white point, it's also it's close but not identical. So if I select this, as you can see now, it's gamma 2.22, and it's a different white point, and the brightest is just set to native. That's what you have in here. So, but by now I could calibrate my screen to this value. The next question is, on the other hand, does this work with every application I use for video editing? And the answer is, sorry, no, it does not. But this is not our fault. Uh, hopefully this will change very soon. If you work with the um, Adobe Premiere Pro, 
program. And if you have this, you will see Adobe Premiere Pro has no setting on color management. As you know from Photoshop, if you go to the edit menu, you have the color uh, preferences you can set up for the application, no problem. In Adobe Premiere Pro, there's nothing. Color manage application is DaVinci Resolve if you do video editing. And if you go to Adobe, to the Adobe uh, company, it's After Effects you have to use if you want to use color management in the real situation that you use the profiles and so on. But if you have your monitor calibrated and you use Adobe After Effects in conjunction with Adobe Premiere Pro, then you have closed the gap. So that's the important point. Okay, so that's important to know. So it is good to have the calibration here because then you're on the right track to for the right target. And of course, if you do stills, no way out uh, without color management. So you have to do it. Okay, good. Let's continue. And have a closer look. You can also go to the expert uh, console to set up your own targets or just your create your own targets. And that's important here also. That's also something we didn't do in the past in the webinar because we said, okay, we wanted to show how easy it is. Now, as you do monitor calibration, video calibration, um, you have to know a little bit more about. That's uh, unfortunately the way it is. Okay, but you have all the tools in here. That's the important point. Okay, great. Good to know about. And in the end, you will see, okay, that's the calibration. I have calibrated my Thunderbolt display um, on REC709. And if I compare this to sRGB, you can see that's sRGB, and you can see, yeah, it's covering sRGB. So that's uh, the advantage here. And there's one important point to know. Um, you have seen this before. I'll go back one slot, uh, the slide. Okay. Oops, sorry. I'll have to do it that way. So. Um, if I go to the advanced analysis, I could do also um, have an advanced analysis that allows me to check my monitor because uh, about screen uniformity, color accuracy. As we do a profile, the profile is valid for the entire monitor. But as you know from tests, read a test in, in a magazine, uh, they also tell you, okay, the uniformity of the screen, the color uniformity is good or not as good. You can check yourself and you can see, okay, it's good here or you have some weak areas. Let's say the lower right area is a little bit too dark. That means you know about that means you can take care of this. That's important to know. Okay, let's continue. So what you do the roundup here. When you do the computer calibration, you will have the software that uh, um, showed the selected reference. So not just one reference, the reference you select for video, for um, still, whatever. And it measures the difference between what is the target and what's the monitor give us here. And it calculates a correction curve the software automatically and creates the ICC profile and will be automatically activated. So you don't have to do anything. That's important to know. Because this is what an ICC profile is made for. ICC profile, what's this? That's a standard. ICC stands for International Color Consortium. And it describes the color space of a device, like a printer, like a scanner, like a display. But it contains more. It, ha it corrects the white point, as we have seen. It's for the linearization, as we know now. And you need it for the soft proof. And it can be used on all type of display and printers. That's important. 
And what you can see here, we have different color spaces in this little area up here, just to give you an idea. Okay, great. Let's continue. And one important point to know is that each ICC profile has two parts. And one part will be used by the operating system and by the image editing software. If the image editing software or the um, film editing software is color managed, then this part will be used and for the correction to say, okay, this is what you, you have, let's say sRGB, but it has to be, um, there's a monitor profile on top, it has to be calculated on top, but it is not in the file, it's just to give you the correct impression. The second part is the correction curve that will be uploaded in the lookup table of the graphic card each time when you start the computer. And that's if a complete color management, and if it's that way, you don't have to do anything with the editing software. You don't have to change the editing software in any settings. That's the good and big advantage here. Let's have a closer look. And one second, uh, here we are. Let's take uh, a camera and um, let's say we took an image in sRGB or Adobe RGB. If it's a raw file, okay, the decision if it's sRGB or Adobe RGB will be taken over here. It will go into the computer, at least here with the raw conversion, we will have sRGB or Adobe RGB. And if you're in the application, let's say in Lightroom, Photoshop, or whatever, and the image is sRGB, it will be automatic that a monitor profile will be calculated on top to correct the color on the monitor. It will be not inside of the file itself. The file is sRGB or Adobe RGB. And it stays sRGB and or Adobe RGB. Don't mix it, don't go from sRGB to Adobe RGB and backwards. Stay with whatever, it, sRGB or Adobe RGB. And at the end, if it goes to a print, let's say for a web print, it's very often as sRGB, or if it goes to a web, yeah, if you want to, to have it on a website, it's sRGB. If you have a reliable print service, if you have your own printer, you can use it Adobe RGB or you can use sRGB, depending what your printer will offer. The important thing is that if the image is an sRGB, if it comes to you as, as an sRGB file, stay doing the entire workflow and keep it in sRGB. If it's Adobe RGB, stay with Adobe RGB, and at the end, you can decide if it's good to go down to sRGB or if you stay with Adobe RGB. Okay, great. So, some additional information. Place dark in your room, use indirect lightning, no direct uh, light hits the screen. A stabilized ambient light situation. That's important, you see. That's the main important thing. Work with a warm-up computer and monitor. And recalibrate every two weeks. If you're lazy, do it every four weeks. But if you're lazy and you have an important job to do, spend the five minutes for the calibration and do the calibration before you do the job. Even if you have done the calibration, let's say, two weeks ago. So do an extra one. And what is important from my point of view, and that's what I would like to show you in a, on a sample on the next slide, avoid colorful walls and surface around your monitor because they have an impact on your eyes. Therefore, let's have a look. And you can see this image over here, and um, you see a black point in the middle. This image is um, on, uh, yeah, we have converted the colors, uh, we have flipped them, so that's okay. 
but please have a look at the black point and unfortunately I have to talk about a, little, a few seconds because uh, the effect I would like to show you if you have a look still at the black point in the middle um, the effect will show you on how you can play tricks on your eyes that's the reason behind this you see some um, yeah some information uh, will be sent from your eye to your brain by via the nerves it's electric electric sorry that's um, electrical information you see sent over the nerves but some reactions in your eyes are chemical reactions and they will take a few seconds time so by now you have looked at the black point and what I will do I will turn over now into a color image right it's a beautiful color Im image it's not a beautiful color image if you now close your eyes for about one two seconds open your eyes again or look some somewhere else and come back now to the monitor then you will see it's not a color image it's a black and white image and for example if you're wearing a t-shirt let's say you wear a blue t-shirt and um, that has an impact so if you look at your t-shirt for a certain time and then you look at the monitor it's the same situation what we have before so that's uh, important make sure around your monitor everything is more gray not colorful you don't have to do it all the time but when you do image editing when you do video editing and when you judge colors that's important to know okay good let's continue we have uh, done now the monitor calibration and we have seen the aspect and heard about okay it's REC 709 for um, videography if you do HD video okay we have seen also the um, advanced modes uh, we can do in the monitor calibration if we have a special target okay good good to know and we now work with an, a field monitor if we work with a TV what we can't do on a TV we can't save an ICC profile on a TV if you have a video reference monitor attached to um, a special box so that's not with, uh, with the graphic cards these special boxes are from Metrox or there are other vendors that have those boxes so it's more a TV so you don't have the possibility to store an ICC profile there that means you have only brightness contrast saturation and whatever uh, is provided by the manufacturer of that TV or reference monitor to adjust the monitor no ICC profile that means we have to do uh, TV calibration and that's what we do, will do now so no ICC profile you will have to do the settings of TV and video reference display calibration so that means that's what you will see when you start the software you will ha have the possibility to adjust color temperature brightness contrast tint color as I has mentioned again you have a checklist um, make sure you have the DVD player or, or blu-ray player ready because the sample images come from the DVD or from the blu-ray if you don't have a DVD or blu-ray um, player uh, at the moment these images you can also download from our website send uh, us an email to the support or go on our support website and uh, submit a ticket then you will need your TV remote control to um, adjust the TV on brightness and so on and you will need a, a laptop where the spider for elite HD software will run with of course the spider for elite uh, TV um, HD sensor okay good so you have to check all this 
and then you will continue and the setup will look like this. You have the spider for Elite HD and you will use maybe the spider web or the counter white to attach it on the TV. But it will be plugged into your computer and you will run the software on your computer. And then you use the Blu-ray player, the DVD player to play the samples the software will tell you on the TV and will be measured by the sensor. That's the way it works. And you use the, control, uh, the remote control to enter the given values. That's the way it works. So, first you will select the TV type. Then it's the question, what functionalities does your TV or field monitor offers? If there is an option, like for example, my sample monitor here, my sample TV didn't have color temperature presets, so I just uncheck this. What is also important to know, for example, um, there are uh, manufacturers that have a contrast saying from minus 50 to plus 50, so a different scaling here. Please just enter. You see, the reason is on a computer it's more or less identical from the slider options you have on the different windows. On a TV, it's not. That's the point where you have to adjust first once. Okay, then you will have the information please play pattern one, as you can see, on your DVD or on your Blu-ray. and. So the sensor will see pattern one and you click on next and it will do the reading. Then you get the next instruction, for example, place, uh, uh, play pattern two and uh, you will do. Make sure that if there is an on-screen display appears that this menu is gone before you click next for the next reading. So that's it. You see, it's much more interactive compared to a computer calibration, but it's not really difficult. And then you'll get the instruction like, okay, change the contrast to 100 and next will be change the contrast to zero and then it's the contrast to 50 and maybe to 25. So it will be closer and closer and closer. That's okay if your comp uh, TV ha scale on the contrast has, let's say, from minus 50 to plus 50 or from 0 to 100. And if the value is displayed there, it's no problem. If it's just a scale where you can see the indicator without an, uh, um, a value, it's more difficult and it takes a little bit more time. Hopefully, these types of uh, TVs are dying out. Okay, great. Okay, so at the end you get the information, okay, the contrast value is, let's say, 10. There is a graph where you can see, okay, that was the way you were adjusted. And you will do this one by one from brightness, contrast, color, and so on. And then you will see the new values. These are the default values. So you can see before and after values. And with the report, you can also print it out or save it as a PDF file if you want. And at the end, you have the possibility to go for a before and after as well as uh, get the information. Okay, everything is done. And here are the information when you should do a recalibration. So, you can see, as I mentioned before, it's, it takes a little bit more time, let's say about 20 minutes, instead of a calibration of a computer monitor, which is about three to five minutes. But um, if you are a videographer, it's um, worse to do it. If you um, uh, work with a front projector, I would also do this. And you can see it's simple. It just takes a little bit more time. And then you can be sure that your monitor, your TV show accurate colors. That's the important point. Okay, so you have seen the color management for photography, video, 
That means for TV and cameras. So that's the Spider HD. And that's the bundle, that's all what's in the box here. So that's very, very easy. And for those who need more information, we have the Spider ebook, which is all about color management from a photographer's point of view. So, and the good point, it's free of charge. It has been written by one of our photographers in uh, conjunction with an editor from uh, a very well-known uh, Photoshop magazine. Um, you may know uh, the Dogma magazine or you may know Doc Bauman. And um, one of his editors, um, Christoph Kühne, and one of our photographers, they uh, sit down together and wrote this ebook. And it's free of charge, so please feel free to take advantage. I will show you the link at the end of the webinar also. And for those who need more information, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, LinkedIn, RSS feed, all the spider block, feel free to pass by. And for all those say, okay, I need more. We have a free phone support, 00800 700 870 from Monday to Friday, 9, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning to 12, uh, one thirty to seven, uh, five thirty in the afternoon. That's continental time for all the British, uh, which are here tonight. Continental time. Sorry. And um, so, if you are in a different time zone, it maybe it's easier to go on the online ticket support on our website. So, contact customer support seven days a week, twenty four hours, and um, I guarantee you will have an answer in less than one work day. Okay, good. Um, so you have the support form. Please feel free to use it. The advantage is also, you see, um, some information uh, and some instructions will be a little bit longer sometimes. Or check this or just submit this information. And uh, if we ask you to submit a screenshot, it's something which doesn't work on a phone call, of course. Okay, great. Then uh, we will have more webinars to come. You see, um, you will see webinars in uh, uh, French, English, and German, and maybe some other language to come also. So feel free to have a look at our website. And um, so that's it for now and I will take you now into our chat and uh, please uh, go to the um, go to webinar main panel and there is the question section